Hello everybody and a big welcome to CDH TV. Mons and Pontus here as usual with Joel joining us. Hello guys, nice to be back. And we also have another YouTube channel here with us, Eisenhurst. Hey everyone. And you're also making YouTube videos, so to say? Yes, I also I also produce uh, CDH related content. Uh, you can find me as Eisenhurst on YouTube. And there's a link in the description below if you want to take a look at the other deck techs and cool ideas from other people's perspective. I'm playing a pretty typical blue farm deck list because I'm grinding games for a tournament that's coming up. It's just blue farm a little bit more control -y than you. All right, guys, I'm back again with Tivit again. Mainly we are just uh, aiming for doing the Tassas Oracle uh, combo line or we could, uh, if we have Tivit out, play uh, Time Sieve and uh, take like infinite turns as long as our opponent doesn't have any blockers in the air. Yeah, so we got asked to play Dargo Jessica and since I'm the Dargo guy in this on this channel, it fell upon me to provide. So I threw together a list, basically just a bunch of different Dargo loops, the breach stuff, and we're just looking to either kill people with Dargo plus Jessica or... I'm also playing a request deck. So I said something before and the same goes again. The first Moxfield deck list link posted in the comments below of this video will be the next game uh, commander I'm gonna play. However, there's some filters so there's a chance that links will disappear but uh, we're usually pretty fast collecting the suggestions. But this is basically Sans White Idris Storm. Let's go! Let's collect some opening hands. <laughs> Can we have the aforementioned Blood Moon effect? This is a turn one Blood Moon. That's a very early Blood Moon, which is annoying for my opponents. The question is, do I actually want this? Because this is kind of the downside of having these effects in my deck. Because like, sure, I develop a turn one Blood Moon, but then what do I do? This hand does cast Dargo turn two, and I guess Jessica turn three, so I can start killing people. That's a play. I'm gonna keep this hand. I could definitely see pitching this hand. I do have a lot of live draws as well. So if they deal with Dargo and or, and or Jessica, this hand might just fizzle. If they have artifact mana, this hand might just not stop them at all, which isn't that good. So there's a lot of weaknesses in its hand, and we don't really have a game plan except for just Dargo Bonks. But Dargo Bonks is funny. I kind of want to do Dargo Bonks. I haven't actually activated Jessica on a Dargo ever, so I will keep it. It's a meme. I wouldn't recommend keeping this actually, but it's funny. Let's go. <laughs> Um, all right, everyone. This is my opener. This was a snap keep for a first seven. There's no doubt about it. I have an Otawara and a Mana Trip, which will allow me to cast a Rhystic Study on turn one. That's always a good play. I will never mull a hand that will allow that. I have an Arcane Signet, so I can follow up on turn two. I have a Mind Break Trap as interaction, which is also really great. And I also have Cabal, Ritual, and Culling the Weak, so I can uh, turbo out, for example, a, a, an Ad Nauseum. So I'm really excited about this hand, and I will snap keep this really happy. Kinda like this land if we had one more free ramp spell and another land, but uh, this isn't a keep uh, I would be comfortable with, so uh, let's mulligan. We do have Jeweled Lotus and we do have a land. It is a turn 2 Rhystic Study. I wouldn't hate it, to be honest. And if we draw another land, we can also uh, try cast our commander, either turn 2 turn 3, depending on the situation. It is one land, which is a little bit sad, but a turn 2 Rhystic seems kind of good, so let's try it. This hand is absolutely amazing. We have a lot of mana. So we have Mana Crypt into the Mirror Signet, a land, and Elvish Spirit Guide. So we can have our commander in the play on turn two. That's great. And we still have a few cards in our hand that could storm off and win from that. But also we have a Wish Cloud Talisman. So when we get to our turn two, we can actually get the Wish Cloud Talisman into play on turn one, by the way, when they pass turn cycle. We could actually have Adnos mana and maybe to tutor for Adnos on turn two. Yeah, potentially. We might need to top deck a land on the turn two to be able to achieve six mana to add Nos on turn two, but it's a very likely chance that we're able to do that. We could find a Rhystic Study. I don't really like using Wish Cloud Talisman to gain a Rhystic Study because when you're gaining a Rhystic Study, you're going for the longer game and you don't want to give away a Wish Cloud Talisman if you're going for the longer game. Regardless, this is an amazing hand. We're either going to go turn two Commander or turn two add Nos. This hand opens up a lot of different options for our turn two. So definitely a snap keep. And let's start the match. Okay, I'll start us off. So that gamble is really exciting. I gotta say, this is a turn two win. Or I guess it's, a, do we have the mana? I think we have the mana to do turn two win here. Yeah, that's really funny. Gamble being red and tomb is really good here because, uh, so play the turn one Magus and a Goblin Welder. Then turn two, 
We gamble, discard the Fraction Altar, reanimate it well with Welder, hopefully, a 50-50 shot, and then we storm off. That's really funny. Let's go. So, land turn will be a snow-covered mountain. Cast a Mana Crypt. Tap 3 for a Magus of the Moon. I would like to cast this Chromox. Imprint this Reckless Barbarian. Tap Chromox for a red Goblin Welder. Then I'll pass my turn. Play a mountain, cast a Mana Crypt, an Arcane Signet, a Ragavan. Fetch land, a Mana Crypt, join you guys. So so play a jeweled lotus as well. Pass my turn. I'm gonna play this mountain stomping ground that comes into play untapped now actually. Don't need to pay life for it. And I'm also going to cast a mana crypt here. Demir Signet. And I'm gonna cast a Wish Claw Talisman. Pass the turn. Roll for Crypt, what's this damage? Roll a 1, so that's 3 damage. Land for turn will be this Mountain Mana Vault. Tap Chromox, I would like to cast this Gamble. Wait, do you have a Goblin Welder in play? How many cards mm -hmm. do you have in your hand? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you win See, from this? What, what combo piece does he get with the game? He's getting a friction. Oh, he will lose in the game here. He's getting friction altar. Would I? You would. <laughs> Gamble resolves. Find this friction altar. So I have one card in hand. Friction altar in graveyard. Then I will tap Goblin Welder, targeting my friction altar in my graveyard and my mana bolts. I would like to swap them. Frixen Altar is in play. I will sacrifice this Goblin Welder to fix an Altar. Then I will use that red, sacrifice this Mana Crypt as an additional cost to cast this Dargo. So Dargo resolves. Then I will sacrifice him to fix an uh, Altar, make it red. So at this point, I've sacrificed four permanents, reducing Dargo's total cost by eight. So each time I cast him, I sacrifice him, and that's a new sacrifice. So that his reduction on the card will always uh, negate the commander tax, which means I can recast him for red, sack him for red, and repeat this for for infinite Dargo casts. Uh, not infinite mana though. So my end state will be Dargo in play. I have cast my Dargo, let's just say 30 times because 60 command attacks is enough. No, wait, no, not six, not 30. 40, so 80 command attacks is enough. I might want to recast them in the future. Now. Use a red and a colorless to cast Jessica. So Jessica has the interesting ability here that she enters with loyalty equal to the amount of times I've cast my commander. And I've cast my Dargo a bunch of times, so she will have a bunch of counters. And then I can minus X her to deal that X damage which will be the amount of loyalty counters she has. Yes, I have something I would like to interact and I will cast a Mind Break Trap. That's very sad. I'm Hellbent, so Jessica gets countered. Sacrifice Dargo, make a red, tap my mountain, recast Jessica. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jessica will enter with 50 counters plus, and I'll minus 40 to kill the table. Dargo go burr. Good game. So that went fast. Let's uh, game two, right? Absolutely. Of souls, a mox opal, a mox diamond. I have a mana crypt, so we already have a ton of fast mana. I have an, a culling the weak, deflecting sword, and final fortune. So my thinking is I want to put away the final fortune because I can't use it in the early game. It's more of a like second um, way to uh, second attempt to win the game, which is a I'm, I'm far away from that. But I can use crypt diamond mox opal, pitch the cavern into the mox diamond to have a turn one timna. I, I hope to top uh, to top deck a land, so I would even have a turn one. I could even have a turn one crom. That's dope. Def Collecting SWAT will be online from turn one on, and Culling the Week might be uh, interesting to set one of the commanders to have an early ad nauseum if I draw into one, or just another early payoff. So I think this is a keep. I will at least have a turn one Timna. That sounds really good. Yeah, so I will put this card on the bottom. So this hand is. It's like a turn three, turn four win attempt because it's gonna be a turn two wish claw, turn three wish claw activation, and then win later. Like it, it's lacking speed. We have good cards in the hand, but too many lands and no man acceleration, so we're gonna mulligan. If we just had one land, this could be amazing. We can't risk this either. Like if we don't top deck, like if we don't top deck a land, this hand is dead. So we sadly have to mulligan. Mana drain is good. We have a turn two, one mana drain. Sadly, our commander is called dependent and mana drain is just generating colorless so you can't actually utilize the mana from the mana drain either otherwise i could have kept this like if we could have used the mana drain to get our commander into play this could work out but we can't so we basically just have mox diamond and that's it we could be really cool and use the mono consultation on turn one to get the rhystic study on turn two <sighs> live the dream <laughs> 
What I'm actually considering right now is not good, by the way, guys. It's not something I want to recommend. But if we do top take a fastest, we have a turn to win here, actually. You know what? Don't let your memes be dreams. I don't recommend doing this, but we are going to keep this. That to the bottom. So we're sitting with interaction on turn one. And then <laughs> consult before our turn two. Get Rhystic. And uh, yeah. <laughs> There's an absolute possibility that this will go down the toilet, but it could work out. Also, if we just top deck either Tainted Pact or Fasas or a form of like Vamp Tutor, we're golden. So let's hope for the best. Let's take a look at what uh, Yule is doing. If we draw a land, we could potentially cast our commander turn two, which wouldn't be that bad, but it is a gamble because we really need a land in order for it to work. So I think we can get it better. I don't think I want to risk uh, not drawing into a land and potentially not doing anything here. So let's take our second seven. We're still having just one land, which is sad. We don't have any early game ramp, even though we have a lot of two mana ramps, which would be great if we could cast one of them uh, turn one or something like that. But uh, I don't see that it's still good gambling on just one land. So uh, I'm not keeping this. Go to six. All right, so here it is a little bit different. Also a potential turn two with our commander. So yeah, I, I think I will keep this. Bottoming Ursa Saga. So this is actually, funnily enough, a turn three win. That's cool. I don't think a turn three win where I just jam each step without any like backup or like storminess will work in this pod. Now turn three is kind of slow. The line would be to Goblin Matron turn one, find a Goblin Recruiter. Turn two, cast Goblin Recruiter. Turn Turn three, do the Goblin Recruiter line. I want to be a bit more explosive. I want to develop more mana at least. So I'm actually going to chip this. Uh, if I were going first, I would probably keep this. But since I'm going fourth, I don't trust it to work. Also, Rustic just kills this out. And I know you would love this Rustic. So let's go for a different line. Yeah, immediately a no lander. So uh, let's go to six. So this hand almost works. I think we can probably get the turn three win with this as well. The Moonsoul Key, turn three. Sacrifice key, find something, probably jewel dot this and cast the Fraction Altar. It's a bit awkward though, because we need to sacrifice two more things than just the Moon Key. So one more thing if we find a Jewel Lotus uh, to start actually looping. And then we don't actually have the mana to cast Jeski afterwards. So it doesn't really work. We, it's kind of copium. And it's a turn three with no real development before that. And so we're sacking two of our lands to go for it. So no, I'm not going to keep this either. I'm going to five. Yeah, so looks like we're getting punished. This five is a fat bunch of nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So we're basically always keeping this. This is a turn two wheel, two land skirk, and a wheel of misfortune. Uh, sadly, we can't really make use of this dwarven mine or dwarven ruins because we have to sacrifice it. So either we play on sack a skirk or we play on sacrifice a land, and the skirk is just better. So yeah, let's wheel turn two and hopefully try into something better. I will draw for turn. I'll play this mox diamond, pitch a cavern of souls, a mox opal. And I will play a mana crypt. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any lands. Who needs lands? <laughs> pay all the mana to cast Timna. Pass my turn. Draw a card. Hmm. Consult for Rustic. Turn one. On the other hand, we could have an Odd Nos turn two as well. So we put Ox Diamond, Mana Crypt, and we have mana for Mana Drain at the ready. We counterspell whatever we see, like the most expensive thing someone is randomly throwing out. Like there's a Chrom soon, potentially. And then we just, no, we don't have double, triple black. Not gonna work because we only have one Fetch Land, we only have one Mox Diamond. So on the same turn, casting the Monocle Citation, we can't securely cast Adnos. So we're gonna go back to the original plan and... Uh, Consult for Rhystic Study. I'm gonna cast a Mox Diamond, pitching this snow island, the basic island, to it. Then I'm tapping it for one black. <laughs> Demonic <laughs> Consultation! Okay. Puzzle Consultation. I'm gonna name Rhystic Study. <laughs> Alright, so first six, we could die. No, no, we're alive. So not in the top six. And honestly, we haven't really lost anything of importance. All of these can disappear forever. Three lands. What pack does oh my god! Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Could you be any more you lucky? lucky bastard. <laughs> yes! 
Better lucky than good, you know what they say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we've literally only lost lands and a few rituals here and there. Yeah. That's... Um, land. I'm honestly kind of okay being uh, getting rid of those. Steam vents. I'm going to cast this mana crypt. And now I have the magical count to free. And I want to cast Rhystic Study. And then I pass the turn. Draw a card. Play a command tower. Play Chromox. You may draw mons. Exile this toxic deluge. Grim Monolith. You may draw mons. Pass my turn. Lands for turn would be a snow covered mountain. Tap it for a Skirk Prospector. Mons may draw. And I'll pass the turn. Perfect. No land. Yeah, I will move to combat. I will swing two at mods i take two uh, i'll gain two and i'll pay one so i'll be at 38 and i will draw cards off timna pass my turn untap and draw a card heads is damaged i flip heads i take three damage i'm gonna play this lotus petal i'm gonna play a scalding tarn and sacrifice the scalding tarn yeah i would like to react to that fetch on the stack i would like to cast an opposition agent and i will pay for the rustic too that's a little bit annoying i'm gonna be honest <laughs> that prevents me from doing idris because now i'm lacking a colored mana i'm gonna respond to this because i want my land for some reason i'm gonna mana drain that thing that's the deflecting swat i'm not paying for a 60. i will draw a card first and then i have uh, no further effects uh, against this you can uh, stop my mana drain from happening and uh, your op agent will resolve and you get the, the effect and then uh, underground sea in your deck still here is the underground sea you did need land so it's yours after that i'm going to follow up with a arcane signet so there's a normal reason to like keep mana available currently i have two mana uh, two magic mana for the typical counter spells however i kind of reveal that i don't really have any more counter spells so i don't see a reason to like not tap out for more value however there is a rhystic study here so if i didn't have rhystic study i would cost more things but because i do have rhystic study and i do believe i'm gonna get more feeded i kind of want to pass priority while keeping mana open for potential drawing into interaction so we're passing the turn here now i'm a bit sad i would love to cast my commander this turn but i can't because i kept the fetch land sad face i would like to pass my turn then take my turn yeah the plan hasn't changed a bit Crystal Vein, land for turn. Tap two, sacrifice Kirk, cast this Wheel of Misfortune. Not paying Rhystic. Okay, so we each will choose a number. So reveal a number at three. One, two, three. The person who shows the highest number will wheel and lose that much life. And the pe person who shows the lowest number will not wheel, not lose life. And the people in, in between will wheel and not lose life. Yuel shows 12, so he will take 12 damage and wheel. Me and Eisenhearts will just wheel. And Mons will not wheel. It's an underworld breach. I can actually re reveal that the reason I choose five here was because I pre I believed there's a chance I will be the lowest even if I choose five to not reveal that I want to keep my hand because when you choose zero you want to keep your hand exactly it's very smart and with that I'll pass my turn okay I will draw for turn combat will swing months up agent no blocks I take two no blocks take three gain two life and I will pay two life move to my second main and draw two cards play an ancient tomb as a land for turn mystic remora and i will not pay for the rhystic study i guess i will pay two life and cost a mental misstep on that i will pay for rhystic study mystic remora gets countered i will pass my turn heads is damage tails no damage i will draw a card for turn i'm gonna play the city of brass i'm gonna cost my commander idris elstrom wielder mm -hmm. and i'm gonna tap this and cost a soul ring pass the turn to play a brainstorm not paying for rhystic so in my end step still i draw a card because of that yes i draw three then i put back two then i'm ready to take my turn i will play this underground c for a total of six mana to cast my commander tivit you may draw all right then we vote for clue or treasure i will create two treasures I will vote for Clue. I'll vote for Clue as well. I vote Clue. Sacrifice two treasures to cast Time Sieve. You may draw a card. I pass on Time Sieve. All right, so with Tivit, on combat damage, I will create five artifacts. And with Time Sieve, I will sacrifice those artifacts to take an extra turn, thus making me have uh, a potential uh, infinity uh, turns with that, as long as I do combat damage. I have a response to this uh, stupid combo. So I'm going to sacrifice this, tap this, 
and generate a blue and cast snap targeting Tumna. I want to return Tumna back to owner's hand. I have no responses to that. I will then untap two lands. Tumna goes back to hand. Snap goes to grave. I'll tap this. And I would like to red elemental blast counterspelling the blue artifact time sieve because it is blue. It is blue. It is true even though it is an artifact. Sadly I have no response to that. Should I kept that mental misstep? Time to go to the graveyard. After that, I will pass my turn. Take my turn. Snow covered mountain. Crack this crystal vein for two colors. Use one of them to cast this mana vault. You can draw. I'll tap it. Use two of my four colors floating and the red to cast this seize the spotlight. So for each opponent, you choose fame or fortune. If you choose fame, I get to steal one of your creatures. And if you choose fortune, I get the treasure and draw a card. So fun enough with threaten effects and Dargo. Uh, Dargo is kind of a sack outlet. So if I wanted to, I can just sack them to Dargo. Uh, in this case, I'm more after the on hit effect from both Yudris and Tirith. But sacking them after getting to go to combat with them would be pretty nice. I will choose fortune. You can have a draw and a treasure because I don't want you to sacrifice my op agent. I would like it to. I don't think you're going to sacrifice my Idris. I think you're going to attack with it because it gains haste and then you can storm with your hand. I don't want that. So you also get a draw and a treasure from me as well. Tivit does almost uh, the same thing as fortune, but much, much better. So uh, I will also choose fortune. So three mana, draw three, make three treasures. That's still pretty good, right? <laughs> It's basically draw free cards for no mana cost. It's actually better because treasures are kind of good. <laughs> That's true. Banking mana. Tap a mountain, use two colors floating and the treasure to cast this treasonous ogre. Yes, you may draw. Treasonous ogre resolves. 12 life to add four red mana. I will cast this relic of legends paying for a stick. I will pay nine life to cast this goblin bombardment paying for a stick. So with relic of legends and the goblin bombardment, I could present an infinite loop where I cast Argo for a red after sacrificing two more things. Tap him to Relic of Legends for a red. Sack him to Goblin Bombardment to shoot someone for one. Then use the red, flo red that floated from him to recast him and then repeat that for infinite pings. Uh, problem here being that Rhystic Study. So Rhystic Study is only a problem because Mons might actually have run removal. Uh, if Mons doesn't run, run removal, it's no problem because I can recast Argo even if he counters it because my combo is still in play. But since I assume Mons is running at least Poseidon, uh, this line doesn't work unless I'm just lucky and he doesn't draw it in 40 cards. So that's not gonna be my main line here. So previously in this game, I actually cast a snap, which wasn't really necessary because I already had the mana to cast my Red Elemental Blast and Counterspell the artifact. The reason I cast snap was to untap two lands. So I would have this City of Brass available just for this potential situation. If I didn't cast snap, I wouldn't have the potential of drawing into an one cost CMC spell and be able to interact with this. So now I can actually pay for something like Poseidon and etc. Golden environment resolves. I will sacrifice this mana vault and a treasure for red to cast a Dargo. You may draw, sadly. I will draw. No interaction. I will sacrifice Dargo to ping up agents. Use the red to recast them. Mons can draw. I draw a card. Pass. Mons, do you have any interaction to stop that? Because I can force you into it if you don't. I have no interaction versus this. Literally none. You should, if you can destroy Rhystic Study, you should destroy Goblin Bombardment. Because here's the thing. You're going to lose to me or Pontus if this continues. Sorry, with, uh, with Dargo on the stack, I will pay three, four, five, lose a life, channel Otawara. I think it's the, the bombardment, right? You should probably destroy the relic here because if he's going for a different line, which it kind of looks like as he's going against your opponent here, you should remove his mana source. Interacting with both here is interacting with him. Relic costs more, so that's more lost life for him. Take this some lessons from once. I will channel your, I will Otawara your relic. That's bounced. So that stops me from going for the protected line. So I guess we just Jolo them. I will pay three life and sacrifice this treasure to recast the relic. You may draw mons. Would have loved to draw into a counter spell right now, but I didn't, so I pass. This feels bad, but it's the only thing I can do right now. I will mind break trap that relic and I will pay for Rhystic Study. Yeah, so I don't actually have a line from here. Pass turn. Yes. I will move to my turn. I will untap in my upkeep. I will roll for crypt. Odds hurt. That's a six, so no damage. I will draw a card. Play the underground C that I exiled with Aqua Agent. Cast a Talisman of Creativity once you can draw another card. Pass my turn from here, I guess. I'm gonna go to my turn. We're gonna untap everything we have and heads his damage. 
Tails, no damage, that's good. We'll draw a card for turn. I'm gonna begin with combat, swinging my Idris straight at that player that stole my Underground C, the Op Agent player, the Red Playmat player, Tymna Prom player. Coming your way. I declare no blockers. Okay, before damage, and I will cast a Dress Down, and I will pay for the Rustic Study with it. I have no response to that. Uh, my creature is a useless uh, nothing, and uh, you take five damage without the trigger. In my second main, I'm gonna cast an Ad Nauseum Floating a Colorless from my Soul Ring right there. Ad Nauseum Resolves. I have a 30 life. One, two, three, zero. Nice. Pass as Oracle. Two, zero, three, zero, two, one, four. Ouch. Two, three, ouch. Zero, zero, two. And we're actually gonna stop there. Land drop, command tower. Casting this Mox Opal. Using the last colorless and casting my Underworld Breach using my Steam Vents. I'm gonna cast a Lotus Petal from my graveyard, exiling these three cards right here. Then I'm gonna cast a Gamble. Now there's an Op Agent in play, but there's also a Dress Down in play. So the Op Agent doesn't actually do anything versus me right here. So I'm gonna ignore it. This is the point turn trick. So I will pay one with a Talisman and with Op Agent on, in play and Gamble on the stack, I would like to cast a Chain of Vapor. I will exile a Simeon Spirit Guide to pay for the Rhystic Study. So also the target for the Chain of Vapor is Dress Down. I have no response to your chain of vapor it can resolve i would like to lose one life and uh, fetch for a uh, scrubland okay chain of vapor resolves i will put dress down back into my hand so now i can think about copying it but i don't think there is a good point of doing that at the moment there's nothing i want to get rid of i don't want to give the chain of vapor to mons because he will just bounce his uh, artifacts sacrifice his lands so he can fuel his graveyard and recast the underworld breach and then continue with whatever he's doing. I also know that he has the Oracle. I will also bounce your op agent here that you can't pay the for. The op agent, exactly, exactly. So I will just um, not copy and leave it as it is. In response to my uh, gamble, I will cast Abrupt Decay on your op agent. They have no further interaction. So that op agent is gone and Mons can gamble. Gamble resolves. I'm uh, finding this card, the Lion's Eye Diamond. Discarding a card at random. I discard a Praetor's Grasp at random. Doesn't really matter because we're going to cast Lion's Eye Diamond. I'm gonna sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond for three blue mana. Discarding my entire enormous hand. I will recast the Lion's Eye Diamond from the graveyard by exiling three cards. Sacrifice the Lotus Petal for one red and use that red to cast a gamble currently floating three blue gamble on the stack i will cast a dress down hoping to draw into uh, another card that might help i have a response to dress down now funnily if i drew brain freeze which was the thing i was gonna tutor for with my gamble but i need to get rid of that thing regardless i have no response to dress down dress down can resolve so because i found my brain freeze i'm gonna find dramatic reversal instead put that into my hand and i'm discarding dramatic reversal to the grave Graveyard, having brain freeze in my hand. So with the power of Underworld Breach, I can cause my abrupt decay from my graveyard after filtering with brain freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond a tiny bit for more value and more mana. And I will boom that thing away. So with the current power, I have assembled a Lion's Eye Diamond, Underworld Breach, and actually I can use a Dramatic Reversal here as well instead. But with this, I can mill out my entire deck with my brain freeze and generate mana from Lion's Eye Diamond by exiling cards from my graveyard along the process. And once my graveyard is gone, I can win the game with a Fasas Oracle ETB effect as I have no more library. GG's! I win! So first game winning on turn 2, second game just moving to 4 and doing nothing. That pretty much sums up 1 red. Just one question, Mons. When you pyroblasted uh, my time sieve, did you have another counter spell in hand? I did not have an interaction at that point for a potential mental misstep. So if you wouldn't have mental misstep, you would have won.